Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are our school committee chair, Joe Barnes, and our vice chair, Michael Grice. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, thank Dan, you for, for having uh, you. Thank Good you for here. joining me. Uh, I thought it would be a great way to, to start off the school year to talk to both of you about some of the challenges ahead for the Needham Schools and, and the work of the school committee, which is uh, so influential in, in so many different ways in what we're doing in Needham. And I think. Uh, Joe, I, I thought I'd start off with you to, to maybe share with the, the community what, uh, you know, what, what's the role of the school committee in Needham? What, what are some of the, uh, uh, the tasks that you try to accomplish with the administration and the, and the community? Well, as, as elected officials, um, our responsibility is to develop policy, to um, develop a budget, which we work closely with you uh, on, and to hire you, which we have, uh, have done uh, nine years ago, I believe. Eight years. It's been eight, eight years, years ago. Yes. Um, and, and so we, we take that job very seriously. We uh, address policy on a regular basis. I think, Michael, you're on the subcommittee for mm -hmm. policy, and those policies are constantly being reviewed and updated. Um, as far as budget's concerned, this, this is the budget time of the year where we take a look at uh, the needs of the schools. We take a look at uh, the resources available to us within the town, uh, and then try to put to get together something that will be manageable for, for the um, for the citizenry. Every other Tuesday night is only a small sample of what we do, uh, as you know. Yeah. We, uh, we serve as liaisons to a variety of committees in town. Uh, I think communication in education is very important. It's just as important as school committee members as we try to communicate our needs to the Finance Committee. We work closely with PPBC on uh, building initiatives. Um, we try to get into the schools as liaisons so that we an, have an understanding of what, what they're doing. We try to bring their needs back to the committee and, uh, and discuss that on a regular basis. So um, it, it, it's an interesting job. It's an important, it's important work, and I think that um, we, we take it seriously. I think we, we work very hard at what we do, and I think uh, we're, in general, successful in what we do. I, I think you're right about the, uh, uh, the icing on, on the cake or the tip of the iceberg. The meetings that most folks, when they see you, is uh, you know, twice a month, but there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes with school committee members. I mean, it's, it really is a, a pretty uh, unique and an important responsibility. And working with the different boards in town, I think uh, you have both, uh, we've worked together to really strengthen those relationships because it, it's not just one board working in isolation, it's in cooperation with the selectmen and the finance committee and the permanent public building committee and park and rec and trying to pull things together for, for the students in Needham. So it, it, it's, it's a lot of work and uh, our seven school committee members are, are pretty hard working. Uh, Michael, one of the other responsibilities of the school committee is to uh, negotiate a contract with our teachers and with those members of our staff who are on a bargaining unit. Right. Um, so recently we just completed a negotiation process for our teachers. Uh, what, did, what was your role? What did that look like? Where did we end up? Well, it was, it was very satisfactory, I think, for all concerned when all was said and done. We've worked very hard in the several negotiations I've done to build uh, a very open, transparent relationship, uh, a relationship based on trust and, and trying to build the shared goals. Um, that's very important in any kind of a negotiation. We're, we're trying not to set it op literally on opposite sides of the table, but in understanding that we are all here to give the best education we can to our kids, you know, to create the next generation of citizens. And we are trying to do it with resources that the town can make available to us to compensate our teachers and our staff fairly because they're the ones who deliver the value. I think those of us on the school committee are always cognizant. In any organization I've been part of, there are people who actually deliver the value, and then there's everyone else, and everyone else's job is to help make that happen. Um, so we, we spent a lot of time, and one of the things we did is we, we worked together to look at where some of the issues were. Uh, one of the things that uh, people notice in this community, we have our performance report, and we talk about, uh, with town meeting with others, that we try to stay kind of in the middle. Our taxes should be in the middle, and our salary should be in the middle. We'd like our performance to be higher, which it often is. Um, but we focused a lot on the top of the teacher uh, uh, distribution, the ones who have been here a long time, um, and how we could make sure that they were well compensated. So it was a, it was a long discussion, 
but I think it was a very, you know, very cordial, very collegial. Uh, you know, I, I tell people that I actually enjoy these negotiating sessions. They look at me like I'm crazy, but it's really a terrific group. I mean, there's there's two of us with Tom Campbell and Ann Galati, um, and then there's a, a group of, of, of representatives from when, each unit. When did you when did it start last year? I'm trying to remember. We the, started in December. December. Or? We had our first meetings, and then we met regularly through through June, and then uh, the the contract was actually agreed upon or, or ratified by the by the bargaining unit in September. Yep. But really, we completed the substantive bulk of our work before school ended on June 20. And the was. school committee voted on the budget, I think, at your last meeting uh, voted in, on in September. Yeah, right. yeah. So, uh, you know, we're moving forward and we will next uh, uh, work with the, uh, the the administrators, kind of the next level of folks who are also part of the bargaining unit, and then with the other represented staff. So that would be the, you know, all the all the support staff, the, um, the folks who work uh, in our classrooms, uh, clerical support, and the uh, food, the food service. service. Employees and so, and we'll be doing that over the course of this year. You know, one of the things I know that, that uh, came up in, in negotiations besides really trying to provide a, a fair contract, uh, you know, compensating our, our folks using data from around the, the, uh, uh, the area to, to see where we stand and, and what's fair and makes sense, is also the uh, educator evaluation system that, that had to be negotiated. Right. And uh, that's a big part of the work ahead for the Needham schools this year. You've both been involved in that. and and know about that, but I certainly uh, I look forward to seeing how we are able to continue to support our teachers in the classroom with, with uh, observations and feedback. We really are looking as the, at this as an opportunity, as negotiated by your, your bargaining team, um, to really provide support for teachers to help them grow and to provide the professional development they need. Correct. So it's a, it's a more robust system. It, it will be more involved. It's going to require a lot of work on, on behalf of our principals and, and administrators, but also our teachers who will be thinking differently about their work, collaborating with each other to, to develop some goals so that they can improve the experience for students in classrooms. And for the first time, this involves everybody. It's not just some of our teachers on alternate years, it's all of our teachers all the time, and so it, it's a, it's a huge endeavor, um, but one that we're you know we're looking forward to. I, th I think we're we're poised to to do a thoughtful job and, and excited about. It. Certainly, one of the challenges we have. I think one of the things that we 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 do very well, you know, as a collaborative effort with administration, school committee, and and the staff is you know there was a, a pilot done in one of our schools at Hillside of the evaluator process. There was a lot of dialogue between administration and, and the faculty. And you know, everyone understands that there is a real opportunity to do something good with this educator evaluation, but everyone also appreciates how much work it is. And I sometimes think that uh, you know, when we talk with the, with, with the teachers and with the uh, Neem Education Association, it's not just any one, but we, as you <coughs> know, are, are constantly being asked by the state and by other authorities to do more things, report more things, add more things. And, you know, we know that those those don't add value to the classroom, frankly. Um, to some degree, in the aggregate, there's data that are collected at the state level and perhaps, you know, it has some value, but there are things that, that can take away from the classroom. So that was something that we're always sensitive to when we have these discussions. And one of the things, when I talk to people in the community, a lot of people, you know, been in business, used to getting, you know, performance evaluations. But this new system is, I, I think it's terrific in the sense that it's not one evaluation that's kind of planned and scripted. They'll be in several times a year. But that also means that every person who evaluates um, has to then within 48 hours come back, have a written report and a conversation. Now that's great because you're getting you know almost instant feedback, well, which we know is good, but there's a lot of work there. I, I think to Michael's point also, this is an ongoing process. <coughs> it's no longer the one or two times a year that an administrator would come into the classroom and do an evaluation. There's an ongoing discussion which teachers welcome. Teachers like to have someone understand what they're doing. Uh, not only is it an opportunity to help teachers grow, those that need the growth that, that is evident, but it, it's an opportunity to affirm the good work that the teachers who are really great don't always get the opportunity to, to have uh, the feedback to get. Um, so as Michael says, I, that, that, that personal interaction that has to happen within a certain amount of time, but more than that, it's the ongoing, the, the uh, the ongoing opportunities that, that administrators have to see what goes on on a daily basis in the classroom. It's a terrific system, I think. I mean, what we're, we're looking at it really as, as a coaching model, you know, uh, just as, as a coach would pull a player uh, aside uh, to, to suggest uh, how a, a play had went. 
or had gone, uh, this is an opportunity to, to have an ongoing conversation about teaching and learning in the classroom. So it's exciting. It's a big challenge, and, and it's one of the uh, big challenges ahead this year that we will certainly be reporting to the school committee how, how that goes. And so there are a lot of challenges ahead for the uh, Needham School Committee, for the Needham community, and the schools over the next year or so. And, and one of the challenges, it's actually it's kind of a theme. It's, it's the theme music, and it's about space. Uh, Joe, and I was wondering if, uh, you know, we, here, here's the context. We have this year about 50 to 60. We don't have a specific number right yet, but we have about 50 or 60 more students than we did last year. In fact, I, uh, we, we were talking earlier that, that uh, since I started eight years ago, we've, we've added about 450 to 470 new students to the Needham schools, which is the equivalent mm -hmm. of Mitchell. Um, Space is a concern. The school committee is talking about space. Uh, where where are we at with that? What are some of the what are some of the uh, the points we have to hit and be aware of? Well, I, I think the, the the needs of of the two buildings in particular, Hillside and, and, and Mitchell, are well documented. Uh, the condition of the school uh, needs to be addressed. The size of the school, obviously, they're they're um, they're finding spaces on in corridors in rooms have been that have been converted from closets to, for teaching spaces. So I think uh, we've done our best to let the community know that the needs of Hillside School, the needs of Mitchell, uh, are not something that's happened overnight. We've been having this discussion for, for some time. Uh, we recently had a visit from the MSBA, which y you may, may reference in a, in a minute here. Uh, because we have a, a, an interest in partnering with them in order to uh, rebuild the uh, Hillside School. That is our first priority. The Hillside School has been designated as the top choice for, for ad addressing its needs. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not uh, concerned about the Mitchell School also. That has serious space issues as well. Um, and we'll be going to town meeting in another two or three weeks asking for some, um, some money for some modulars there. So uh, every year is important. This one in particular with the additional students that come through the the doors each day. Uh, here at Needham High School, we know that they're capturing every space possible. So it's not just the, the buildings that have to be rebuilt, but uh, all of our buildings are pretty much at capacity and there's no place to turn. So uh, interesting times, important times, but uh, something I think that, that the community understands based on the communication that we've provided and the support I think that we're going to get as we go forward. We also, I think, I, I like to remind people when I, when I talk with them that this community has made an incredible investment in our facilities, and it's, it's, a, it's a natural process. So much was built in the years after the war when this community grew, um, and so a lot of those buildings aged at the same time. <clears throat> but if you look around, we have the Needham High School, the Broad Middle School, the Elliott School. We just finished a major renovation at the Newman School. We have a new town hall. We will have a new senior center. We have a new library. This community has actually made these investments, uh, and, you know, they've supported them. Uh, there are some more to go, but I, I remind people to look around us at some of the nearby communities where they're just getting started. Um, so, you know, the, although it's a, it's a challenge, and we know we're going to have to ask the community to support the rebuilding of several major buildings, and then beyond that, there's facilities both at the town, police fire station, as well as Emory Grover, and work at the Pollard that's further out. Um, but, you know, we've done a lot, and people should take a, a lot of pride in what this community has done in supporting that. It's mean, it meant we've had the space to handle the kids that have come in so far. Well, I, I, would, I would echo your comments. I mean, this community has really thoughtfully, methodically plugged away at tackling its infrastructure and its buildings. I mean, you just have to look around to see what has been redeveloped or renovated or torn down and rebuilt from the schools to, to uh, town hall, the senior center, which will open in a matter of days. I mean, you, you, you've, it can't all happen at one time, and, uh, and yet the schools are certainly a priority for the community, and, and we hope that Hillside really uh, can be up next, and we hope that Hillside, uh, that the MSBA, Massachusetts School Building Authority, will, will work with us to provide some partial funding to get that project going. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask both of you that's going to be tricky with Hillside and with Mitchell, we have to rebuild those schools, and it's pretty clear the students have to be off-site when we rebuild them. We just can't do that work. It's too intrusive. It's, it's very different than Newman where we had space to put children. Um, what do we do? What's, what's some of the conversations going on? If we tackle Hillside first and rebuild at Hillside, 
How, what are what are some? What are you hearing about where we need to put children, and what should we do? And well, you know that one of the other challenges with this, and we faced this with Newman. We had to make very clear to the community that when the Mass where the Massachusetts School Building Authority is concerned, they don't support swing space. They don't support anything. They won't provide funding. So they won't provide funding. Yeah, so yeah. this will be all on our dime, as it was at Newman, where you know, a significant chunk of the cost was modular classrooms. So the conversations um, are really around where could you put modular space for some number of years? And if we're going to rebuild fundamentally two schools, you're talking about, in an ideal world, probably four years um, that we have to have a, a school facility. There are certainly some conversations uh, around, is there a location where we could, part of the facility that is provided could then be permanent as opposed to just being modular classrooms that are removed. Um, but it, it is a, a discussion that will be much more pressing as we start to talk with the MSBA because, you know, as you know, if, if we start building um, at Hillside and pick your year, September 17, whatever it is, we need to have swing space ready by then. And I think Michael's referring to the module as, as, as the, the swing space because we've done this before. We've looked for space within the town. We've <coughs> looked for, for buildings that could be converted. We've looked for churches that would take us uh, for a period of time. But now we're talking 450 kids, which is far more than simply a couple of rooms here and a couple of rooms there. I, I, I think we've said it before also that um, as residents of the town, <coughs> we're very sensitive to the fact that we are not the only committee. We're not the only uh, group of, of uh, in elected officials that have needs. There are a lot of needs out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we've got to try to balance and advocate for the students and the teachers of the town, recognizing that, that, that we're not the only ones that have the needs um, fire, police, um, senior center, and all. So we've got to try to be sure that we're recognizing that we are uh, balancing our requests with where the other needs are as well. Well, and I know that one of the requests that you hear all the time from families, usually young families, mm -hmm. what about full-day kindergarten? Where is that in all this? And right now, it, it, it is a challenge. There just simply is no more space in the existing inventory to, to create a full-day kindergarten program. Fortunately, we have a, a really strong kindergarten after school enrichment program or case mm -hmm. that complements the school day and we're able to house that program uh, for three of our schools at the Congregational Church. Um, we hope we can continue to do that and uh, provide that additional programming. But it, it, it's, a, it's another challenge that, that dealing with all these, uh, these kiddos. Thinking about Needham High School, I believe our October 1 enrollment will have us just under 1,600 students, mm -hmm. you know, 1,598 or something like that. The building was built for 1,450. Um, it certainly is being stretched right now and, and it's still growing. So we, we have some work ahead and, and uh, certainly working with the school committee, uh, which has been great and will, is incredibly important, but also the other town boards will, will help us get to where we need to be. Well, to, to, to that point, we, we've spoken, we spoke at last night's school committee meeting, we referenced it this morning at another meeting, uh, the importance of, of maintaining class size or even bringing class size down um, so that we have that ratio of teacher and student to be appropriate. Doing that, we really have very few spaces that yeah. we can create yeah. in order to have classrooms yeah. where the, the classes are smaller. So, you know, we're being pushed in many different directions, squeezed in many, many directions. To your point about all-day kindergarten, I don't think there's anybody on the committee who has said, you know, it's not that important. Um, we could probably do without it. I hear people from other communities saying, do you have it? Well, I know my daughter-in-law or my son-in-law would like to move into the town, but that's an important piece here. So I, I think we're, we're very sensitive to the fact that it's an important piece in, in a, a young child's education and in, in managing uh, families, parents need that as well. So I think we want that. We're one of the few communities now among our peer communities that doesn't have it. I um, think only Medfield and yeah. Needham are the only that I'm aware of that have, uh, uh, have to K. Have to K. And I, you know, I, I mean, this has been a conversation as long as I can remember. It's certainly been a conversation as long as I've been on the school committee in my, my ninth year. In the early years, the conversation was about cost because we were dealing with budget cuts and trying to get overrides for services. Yeah. Yeah. And when you parents asked you, you would say, well, we haven't been able to find the dollars. Several years ago, that conversation shifted um, to, well, that's true, but frankly, the bigger problem is we don't have any place to put the kids. Same is true of the Needham High School challenges that, you know, yes, we would need more teachers, but the space is a challenge. Um, what I will say about the space is that, and this goes, speaks, I think, to the long-term planning that we all have to do as a school committee with you and with the other boards in town, that when we did the feasibility studies um, to look at the Hillside and Mitchell, we did the pre-feasibility studies that we paid for and we did as a community, 
one of the requirements that we put on the on the uh, the, the architects as they look at it, we wanted to uh, a plan that would allow us to put full day K in all our schools, and you know the plans that the pro potential plans that they put forward all address that, and we thought that that was, and we still think it's a very important uh, element in this that whatever we do at Hillside and Mitchell. And with the support of the MSBA, we want to be sure that when those buildings are complete, we aren't looking around saying, well, we have all pretty new buildings. We can't put the kindergarten anywhere. So that will be part of the equation. Yeah. I, I think it's fair to say also, Dan, that uh, uh, we've been criticized, and not criticized, but there were questioned, I guess, in the past when we would reach capacity sooner than we expected and parents would say, what were you thinking? Why didn't you plan for this, this enrollment? Um, why couldn't you have created some additional space so that you could grow into the building? And I know we've got limitations on uh, when we work with the MSBA. They, they, they kind of tell us what we can do and what we can't do. And when they're, they're partnering with us and providing some of the costs, we have to do some of that uh, uh, concession. Uh, but we didn't anticipate another 450 students. We, uh, many towns have leveled off. Some uh, towns are dropping with their, their enrollments. Um, we seem to be a very attractive place for, for young parents to move. We think that's a wonderful thing, but with it comes the pain that we're now going through. Right, uh, right. We, we've had that conversation, uh, certainly with the MSBA, even in the early work about looking at enrollment models. They have the model they built, and they showed us declining. And, you know, we're one of the few communities that, that hasn't. We have grown since 1990 when this when the school system hit its low of students, which is about 4,000. We've grown at a compounded 2% a year just consistently for 20 plus years. Yeah. You know, it's probably going to level off, but we all know from past experience in this community, there are enough homes in this community to have a lot more kids in the school. Not as likely we're going to, but we just look at the demographic changes. I mean, I look around and I see a lot more kid families with three and four kids. Um, that alone could be a huge shift in three or four years. So we have to be very sensitive to the fact that um, we could continue to grow. And we, as we look at those long-range plans, we try to we do as best we can because it would be just as bad to have the community come back to us. And it's happening in some communities saying, you have all the space you don't need. Yeah. Right? And well, and, it, and it's also true that while the school population has grown, the, the town's population has remained steady. Right. And so the pressure really has been on the school mm -hmm. side. And fortunately, you know, I work and you live in a community where people think a lot about that and are very supportive of the schools. And, and uh, uh, almost, I won't say unhesitatingly, but, but folks really want to know what can they do and, and where do they go. One of the other challenges, I think, besides space is, is also time. And there's been a, a conversation uh, that, that uh, you, you've both been involved in uh, and I hope to, to bring to the school committee for, more, for a more full discussion, and that is perhaps about finding some more time uh, to do the things we want to do with children in schools. What, what have you heard about that, or what, what might you suggest to me as words of wisdom as we think about extending the day um, for our children, particularly at the elementary level? Well, I, I don't think there's any substitute for the amount of time that you can, you can add for a teacher to be with a, a student. I think the curriculum is extremely important. I think that uh, uh, what we teach the kids is extremely important. And we're going to be dictated a lot by, by the common core on, on that. But uh, I, I think what we do with the students is very, very important. But there's no substitute for the interaction of teacher with student. And I think if you can extend that time, create opportunities for teachers to interact with kids, uh, it, it's a win-win for everybody. I have heard uh, from, from my friends in town, uh, they would like to have a longer school day. What that means, how it can be fashioned, I think is still in the discussion stage. But whenever you can do an add-on, um, I think it's a real plus. Yeah, and I, I mean, in the years that, again, I've been on school committee, if you talk to the elementary principals, they will say again and again, we cannot get to everything we need and want to get to sure. in the course of the day. So, you know, the ability to, to put together a plan to do that. And one of the things that we've talked about over the last several years is we've had the group and time study committee looking at it is the way we can use this to enhance our education. Um, you know, in essence, part of this is having more resources working with the kids for a longer time, but that also means you can do some different things. And I, I think everyone who has looked at this, yourself and the, the teachers and the administrators and ourselves, have talked about how we can make, you know, it's about quality, it's not about quantity, it's not about the 10 minutes on the same subject, it's what can we do differently that we haven't done before. And I'm very enthusiastic about the response that we've had from really just across our school community as to ways to do that. And 
the other part I think of what I'd like the community to understand is there's additional time in the day with the students, but if we do it right, there's additional time for teachers to work with each other. One of the most challenging things, we, we want them to work collaboratively, we want them to learn from each other, um, and they have to work on different levels. Fourth grade teachers have to work with each other, but then they have to work across disciplines. Right? And there's not a lot of time to do that, and there isn't as, as much time as you'd like for you know, team meetings with, uh, with, with families when you need to do that. So the ability in this to be able to get some more dedicated time for teachers to do work with each other is makes a huge impact and, and sometimes that's not as visible uh, parents tend to think of how much time is my student in the class but how much time those teachers are spending with each other preparing for the class talking about students really makes a big difference and, and what you can do with those students right. uh, you know thinking about and one of the things we hope to talk to the school committee about is whether or not we can re we can think about a uh, foreign language program Spanish perhaps uh, some additional arts theater arts at the elementary level so we'll we'll talk about uh, all of those and share those with the school committee yeah, I'm thinking about time, and I know that we're running out of time as well. Um, Joe, I wanted to ask you a question. So you've been removed as an educator in the Needham schools for now nine years. Eight years? Um, 2006. Okay. You do the numbers. So right whatever that, whatever. Yes, the, so yes, what's, yes. So as you look around <coughs> and as you visit the schools, what's changed since you've been principal at Pollard? Uh, fewer people know me. <laughs> Few people say hello. <laughs> uh, I, I think when I was at Pollard, which were probably the, the seven best years of my career, um, th there, there's been a huge turnover. I think people have retired as I have. Uh, there's a lot younger teachers there. But the quality of education continues. Um, I, I think that um, the, the work that, that uh, the teachers do continues to be very, very impressive. So I, I see no difference there at all. Uh, I'm very pleased that I was able to stay and be part of uh, what I consider to be a great school system, and I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Well, he's I very modest about what he did, but... No, I understand that. And but I, he, he's one of many. One of the things that I think speaks volumes to the quality of this school system and the, the, the investment that everyone has made in is the number of teachers and staff who retire and then are back. They're back filling in. They're back working on a special program. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. once you retire, you don't have to do that. And it, it is astounding to me the number of people that you see who continue to work with the schools, as, as Joe has done in, in the school committee capacity. And I think that you know we, well, we owe a great debt to them. And he continues to, to be a mentor to educators throughout the Commonwealth in different programs, and uh, so the, the, uh, the good work continues. Well, you have challenges ahead uh, this year. I'm, I'm thinking that educator evaluation and making sure that that uh, is introduced and supports our teachers in a big way will be a, a big challenge. We also have the challenge the school committee is, is very much involved in, and that is around space and focusing on Hillside initially. Um, so that's a, a huge challenge. And then lastly, really thinking about time and how we can use time, perhaps extended time, to really enrich uh, and empower the learning experience for our children. So uh, we look forward. To, uh, I certainly uh, am privileged and honored to work with you, and I look forward to our conversations ahead as we support the children and families in Needham. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Dan. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you.